so stationers came out uh, was it two days ago um i found it really interesting and had a lot of questions had a real hard time getting started um there's already a few tutorials on like the basic keyboard usage and stuff i'm gonna jump into something a little more complicated i'm gonna talk about uh, filling gas cylinders in survival mode i haven't even played creative mode um it actually bothers me a little bit that the developers don't seem to have played survival mode much and so it's really a big cliff getting started in survival mode. Um, so I'm going to load a world that I've got going. I've got my gas exchange system built. We'll have to go out and probably get some volatiles or something to uh, put into a can. But I'll start out with uh, just showing it. Put my glasses on. Apologies for the background noise. Problem is, is that um, since I set up the streaming setup, I have more equipment in my office and this microphone is extremely sensitive hopefully everybody can hear me i should probably play my stream on the laptop to see if i can hear myself at all oh yes i can awesome uh, see i have Somebody watching, one person, maybe. <laughs> Alright, um, hopefully this thing, Twitch is recording it. Um, I might have to quit out and switch to OBS because I just realized that it is not allowing me to... keep a copy. That's er. That's irritating. That is really irritating. Um, all right, well, maybe I'll re-record this later and save it. So, over here, I have my gas exchange room, and yes, it is a room because I found out it doesn't seem that the um, survive or creative mode trick in the space game of standing over the top of a vent or standing next to a scrubber um, outside works. It doesn't seem to capture any gas, which is fine. Um, I'm going to throw a battery in my suit really quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there any way I can get rid of this goddamn watermark in the right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, shoot. Let's. Oh, I need new air tank. Obviously I haven't set up lights in my base yet um, just because I haven't wanted to. Oop, I should throw the battery in so I can use my light. I just put this in here a little bit ago so it hasn't had a chance to charge. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, where's that blue tank? There we are. This one. Oh man, that one's ready to explode. And mm. well, that's a pickle. Uh, I don't want to, because I want to start outside and show you what I've got out on top, and then work my way in. Eh, well, I'll just keep going with the gas I've got. So, um, to recap for the people that just showed up, I'm 
going to show my gas exchange system here how to fill tanks in creative mode. I'm going to start outside because that's it's not super important but it'll help you understand a little bit what's going on. So feel free to chat. I do have chat up on the um, game machine. Actually let's go settings. Let's turn off that and that. I don't know what the lag is on Twitch anymore. I haven't done this in a long, long time. So out on the roof, um, ignore this part, that's my furnace. Ignore this part, that's my base cooling. You don't need this many. Um, for the gas exchange room, it has to be made out of composite walls and or composite windows. Iron walls blow out. Iron frames don't let the sun in and you need the sun in order to melt the volatiles or the ice, the gas ice. Um, you either do that or you have to leave a little bit of gas in the room and um, that way there's some temperature in there so it will melt because otherwise it won't melt. The wall heaters don't melt it. They, they only heat the air. They don't radiate any heat tried a bunch of different ways to get it to melt in the dark it just doesn't work so I've got like four pipe radiators which is more than enough and this is optional these pipe radiators do require steel the reason I have the pipe radiators is so that I can chill gas and fill a canister much more full this is real-world physics in the game if you chill a gas or chill a can you can fill much more into it at the time you're filling it. However, you have to remember, it's gonna warm up. If you don't leave enough space after it warms up, you end up with a bomb, especially in space, space engineers, or sorry, station engineers, my bad, station engineers here, where we don't have any pressure relief valves on our tanks. They just blow up with um, impressive results. <clears throat> so on the outside here, I've got a passive vent and a valve. The valve is half sticking outside just because that's where I put it because I've got a one by two room. Um, you can lay it out however you want. I'll go in and explain all these valves. This is more complicated than it needs to be because I'm doing many things with it including um, uh, cooling my base which I'll get into later. Basically running the furnace inside is a bad idea. You need to put your furnace outside. So, uh, if there's any questions, go ahead and post them in chat. I don't really have too many people watching. It looks like only one person, but, you know. So, the passive vent is for purging the system to the outside, um, dumping excess unwanted gas, that sort of thing. As you can see on the inside, we'll go back in. Um, ooh, that was a little loud. I'm, I should probably turn up the game volume. Hold on, let me grab my mixer. Let me know if audio levels are okay. I haven't done this setup in a while, and I apologize for the audio crackling. That's Windows 10. Ever since upgrading to Windows 10, it has issues. So, anyway. Um, I've got my portable air scrubber sitting on there because I've just been directly dumping um, my contaminants and stuff. To get things on and off of these tank connectors, you use a wrench. It took me for freaking ever to figure this out. You just set it down on top of it, just drop it, and then use the wrench to connect and disconnect. Um, I keep looking over to my laptop because I'm so used to that being the way in which I see what's going on on the screen. So, Alright, so I've set my portable air scrubber off to the side. I don't have a spare tank right now. What's in this one? A bunch of air still. Uh, 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 uh. Alright, we're going to make another portable tank real quick. While well, that's happening I will explain the gas manifold over here. Let me turn this stuff on. 
And this interface bothers the tar out of me. So I have to make a portable tank so I have something to fill into. Um, my system is set up to fill canisters or portable tanks. At some point I will set it up to fill filtered gas into portable tanks, which I'll get into in a minute. Right now it only fills filtered gas into canisters. Um, and, uh, is it kit tank? It's kit tank. Oh, this is so irritating. No, it's not kit tank, it's a uh, portable tank. Is it portable tank? Or is it, it's not in here, it's, you can only do it in the pipe vendor. generator light whoops tank yes I have the iron in there yay all right uh, is it gonna make two no it'll only make one so I use a door um, if you're gonna do this kind of right and when I redo this I will not have a door um, I will put all the I will put the one active component and all the valves outside the room, but for right now I have to operate this system from inside the room. You're going to want to have your tablet with the atmosphere analyzer card. This is like super important because it's the only way to actually tell what is in these pipes. This pressure meter is damn near useless. It shows zero when there's still quite a bit of pressure still in the pipes and in the pipe manifold. Um, okay. I just had it make a tank. The amount of iron it's used says it should have built a portable tank and I'm missing a portable tank. There it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I gotta turn my voice down. It's probably a little on the loud. Somehow, my portable tank <laughs> went from eh and bounced and ended up in here. That's awesome. I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna attach this portable tank here to this, which is my sort of. Uh, gas input and um, if I can get it out of here uh, gas input and uh, main storage connector so switch over to the wrench connect portable tank again apologize for the crackling from the game audio nothing I can do about it thank Windows 10 pile of crap all right so I don't have any volatiles on me so I can't show you that part it's night anyway so we're not going to wait around for that. I'm going to put this away. So you attach the tank or tanks you want to fill. I have built this in such a way that I can see this gauge from the inside. Also important, you don't want to blow the tank up. Over on the outside, ignore the filter and ignore this pipe here from here down. This is the important part. I have a pipe meter here so I know what the pressure is in here if I'm standing outside. I have a volume pump down here. This is what pumps the gas out of the pipe system and out of the chilled pipe area. If you're using, if you've got some steel, then you can make these radiators and use chilled gas and fill your cylinders. You don't need near as much pressure, but you get the same volume of gas. You can fill your cylinders with chilled gas. That's all this is for. You don't have to do this right away. You can, you can not have any of this. So, first thing when you're setting this up, this 
pipe volume pump, turn it up to full volume. Increase it to 100 liters, because otherwise it's slow. This and this here, these are where you put tanks you're going to fill. If you're filling from the room, which is to say you're, make, you're taking ice and, and volatiles and that and evaporating them and putting them into tanks. Again, this room is set up with a door. You could set this as a completely sealed room with some sort of control setup with the displays and that so you control this active vent from the outside and put a bin or a chute type setup. I haven't done that yet. I will eventually. It has to be made of glass because only the sun will evaporate the ice. So to start filling it's pretty simple. I know there's a lot of valves. It's not as complicated as it looks. First thing we gotta do close the door. Second thing we gotta do make sure your helmet's on because you're gonna be standing in a vacuum in a little while. With my setup I have the room set up so I can evacuate it back into my main base room. Ignore that valve. That's what this volume pump and this passive vent are for. This pumps out from my gas manifold line all the air in this room. So I'm going to close this. I can open this valve which is my vent to base valve. Again you don't have to do that. If you're okay with losing whatever is in here you can just dump it out here by going this way. But this manifold is kind of important because that's where you transfer everything into. So I'm going to make sure that the vent is set inward, which is red. I'm going to kick it on. You'll see the pressure start to drop. And this does take a while, just like the real world. So you don't want to make this room too big. 2x2 two two is about right because you don't end up exploding it. Get the tablet up. So you can see over here, I've still got quite a bit of air despite my suit display saying zero kilopascals because it's measured in such a high and this is important if you want pure gases for whatever reason if you don't care then whatever you can put a vent straight to the outside I am pumping all this back into this pipe network which is getting pumped back into the base so I'm not losing oxygen from my base none of this stuff requires steel so you can build it. It does require a fair amount of resources because you do have to build a fairly decent sized room. You have to have quite a few pipes. But once you start getting iron, it's not too bad. So I'm just waiting for this to pump down. Once it pumps down, um, you can close this valve and you can shut this off anytime after the world pressure in here is zero. It's at this point that if you have volatiles, you'll switch over to your mining belt, throw them out here while the sun is shining. The sun has to be shining or they won't melt. And one stack in a one by two room um, gets you something like 80 kilopascals, something like that, kind of depending on the gas and the overall temperature. You can generally throw out two maybe three stacks as long as you're made of composites and iron frames. An iron wall will blow out at around 150 to 200 kilopascals it seems like. I blew a wall out early on. Um, I had a iron wall here and um, when I was first testing and it blew out either when I vacuumed it down or when I pressurized it. Anyway, you'll throw your volatiles in here. Now that that pipe is evacuated, I'm going to close that valve. You'll throw your volatiles in here. They will melt. You'll get pressure in this room. Over here, I've got two valves. This valve here goes to the back side of a volume pump. And so I'm going to open that. This valve here goes to the front side of the same volume pump. I'll get to that in a minute. That's important when you want to use this system for another gas. So once 
you've pumped it down, once you've thrown a bunch of gas out in here, you're going to kick this on. When you kick this on, it'll suck all the gas that you've collected in here from your ice after it melted, and it'll go into these pipes and into this valve, into that volume pump, and that will pressurize it and push it into this tank these pipes have a certain amount of volume. You will always lose some gas when you switch gases in order to purge the system. I've tried to minimize that in this setup. That's just the way it is. So once you have pumped it all out of this, and again, this atmosphere analyzer is super important because it's the only thing that actually tells you when you have this, and I'm pointing at the screen. Can I do control tab? Can I do, can I draw with my mouse? What is that? Yes. Uh, what, how do I... So, see how it says NA down here? That's important because... And how do I turn this off now? <laughs> oh, okay. Control tab. Maybe not. I don't know how to use this mouse drawing thing. Oh, escape to exit. Oh, great. How do, I, how do I get... Oh, boy. Now I'm stuck in this annotation thing, and I can't get rid of it. I can get back into this Twitch UI, but I can't... Oh, there we go. Wow, that sucked. Alright, I'm learning how to use these tools as I go. So, once you've pumped everything out of here, you can close this valve everything will be in this pipe and your tank. You should see pressure in the tank and that's why it's important that that tank faces you if you're going to be doing it from in the room. You can build this so that you don't have a room you have to get into with this outside, the tank outside, um, and a chute throwing things in so it lands in sunlight, however you want to do it. The act event has to be on a frame which if you put it on the floor, you're fine. So once you've put all the gas you can into it, low pressure. Yeah. Once you put all the gas you can into it, you can pop the door open. Oops, I need to turn that vent off. <laughs> Good thing I have that set up to come out and I'd already evacuated it. And then you should have a tank full of hydrogen or oxygen and nitrogen, whatever your volatiles were. At that point, you can pull the tank off of the base. So turn this off, gotta get my wrench back. So you can just, with the wrench, you can disconnect the tank, and then we can switch. Ooh, I don't wanna do that. This game is so clicky, it's, it's irritating. So you can grab the tank and set it aside. Now, if you'd actually filled gas, you would have pressure in this pipe. That's where this valve comes in handy. Now if it's atmospheric gas, you may just want to push it back into your base, which is where this valve comes in handy. If you're just changing gases, say you've been doing hydrogen and you want to do another gas, then you can, without losing very much gas, you lose each pipe section contains almost a canister of gas it seems like so you're gonna lose some you can vent it to the outside by opening this valve and opening this valve that purges the system again though you're gonna need your atmospheric analyzer from your tablet to make sure that's actually purged because it takes it a while to purge the last bits of gas out if you don't care, then you can just use a gas gauge and see when the pipe measure pressure meter says zero, and then you'll have a little bit of contaminants in your gas. It may not matter. It may matter later. There may be at some point where space engineer says, you know, you can't have, you have to have pure hydrogen. So that's the basic bottle filling. Um, more advanced bottle filling once you fill this room, once, you, once you've thrown ice into this room, filled this room, pumped it into here, 
with this valve open or not. Usually I do it with this valve open. I do it with one of these valves open, which go to radiators on the roof. This will chill the gas down. By chilling the gas down, you can fill more for a given pressure. Um, and that's why you want to leave this valve closed, because you don't want it pumping the warm gas into your tank. You want to chill the gas down as much as you can. Once you've allowed it to chill for a while, and these are super overpowered by the way, it can get gases down quite a bit. Then, once it's chilled, you can open that valve, leaving this valve open because there's gas up in those pipes, and allow the volume pump to pump the chilled gas into your tank. Keep in mind again, when it warms up, it will expand. There's math for it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it matches the real world, but figure on if you're chilling to below zero, like maybe half fill a, a canister, um, if you expect it to warm up to 20 or 30 degrees Celsius, you know, 20 odd degrees Celsius, because it, 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 it expands. The gas expands, the pressure comes up, and you will create a bomb. But you can fill with chilled gas. And why is my Twitch chat not showing? Uh, how do I... There we are. That's how. There we go. Alright, there we go. Um, yeah, it's, it's not too hard. Um, it does involve changing a lot of valves, but this is like, this is kind of how it goes in the real world, too, when you're trying to fill tanks. Um, you, it's a lot of valves and a lot of opening and closing. Um, I'm gonna try to go out and find some volatiles so I can actually show you um, filling some hydrogen into a tank and the process I use for that. Um, this one's pretty full right now. Um, and my freaking... Urgh, this is frustrating. These batteries are so small. Oops. Yeah, no kidding. So I stole a battery. So I need to throw this one on a charger. Oops, not that one on the charger. That one goes in, that one goes on the charger. I wish you could bump things around instead of having to pick them up. Or had more than two hands. Make it so hard to switch stuff back and forth. Alright. Nobody's saying anything in chat. I got like four people watching apparently, but nobody has anything to say. Okay, so we're gonna try to go outside and see if we can find some volatiles to actually show you guys how this works. And let's put this belt away. Probably have a bunch of, yeah, I have a bunch of iron ore in my belt. I'm just gonna stuff it down here. Okay, got my suit closed. I'm gonna lock my mask in case I get punchy. And we're going to head outside and go find some volatiles, and I'll show you how the gas room works. Like an actual live demo, I guess. And I think I remember where I left some. That's the other thing that irritates me a lot, is the wandering around. It's not a feature. Um, the tracking beacon drains batteries too fast to be useful. Uh, you just kind of have to hope you can find your way around. Apologize, it's night. Nothing I can do about it. It doesn't even have gamma adjust. Video. Yep. No gamma adjust. Nothing. So i got some coal here. Looks like I made a huge hole here, so I was probably digging for something. Oh, yep, volatiles, hey. All right, so we're gonna get out our tool. Kick it on. It's stuck in the ground. Just ease that a little bit. All right, so we're gonna get 
some volatiles if we can find enough here. Hopefully we can get like a enough to like really show you guys how this works without blowing up my room. This is another thing that irritates me. There's no way to scan for minerals or anything. You just have to wander around. And the tracking beacon is completely useless because it drains batteries too fast. So you end up getting lost a lot. So I got like one stack in a bit. I didn't really intend to stream this part of it, but um, XSplit is just being a pain in the butt, and so like I'm streaming. So uh, I guess that's all the volatiles in this area. I don't see any more twitchies. So we'll just go back with a stack in a bit and show you how the gas room works. Of course, now we're stuck waiting forever for sun to rise, which sucks. Really, really. Well, so this is one of the bugs. Um, that high pressure alert. Gas doesn't dissipate properly outside. Um, I've had things blow up because I have vented my furnace out here, obviously, and you'll get these random whirling dervishes of high pressure high temperature gas just ripping around and there's you, the particle effects you don't see them they they don't exist but that it's it's like a one by one square of gas it's just squirting around um their atmospheric system definitely has some bugs with outside gas dissipation so um Unfortunately, this process does not work when the sun isn't up, because gas sublimation requires the sun. Um, there's currently no way to heat the gas without other gas in the room. And uh, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, so, when you're getting ready to fill gas, you're going to need to switch over to my other tool belt. It's so freaking clicky. So, I can grab my wrench and I'm going to put that one away because, you know, in games you never figure out how to carry more than two items at once. I will say that the controls, after you get used to them, aren't quite as bad as when you first start out, but they're still really horrible. So again, to connect the tank, it's the wrench. You gotta set the tank on it, point at the tank, and then bada, connect it. Um, still waiting for the sun to rise. This is the crappy part, and this is why I wasn't going to stream this, because now I'm stuck waiting for the sun to rise. <laughs> Which is awesome. Not. Um, somebody say something? Like, anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Hey, sunrise! Okay, so, I've still got my helmet closed, I'm going to close my door. Again, you can build this in its own sealed room so you don't have to go through this step. Um, I had to when I started out because I didn't have enough room or enough iron to really build another one. So I'm pumping the room out right now. I'm going to put this wrench away and get out my tablet because I need that. I'm also going to switch back to my mining belt because I need that. Or I need the things in that. I'm going to wait till this gets to NA, meaning I'm in a complete vacuum. While this is pumping into the manifold, this is pumping out to a, 
a, a pipe volume pump and a passive vent and the reason for both those is so that way I can evacuate this pipe down to zero and see I'm quite a few seconds in I still have and my suit says there's no pressure this says there's no pressure and I still have gas in here now I finally have no gas so I can turn this off I'm waiting for this to go so I'm going to shut my tablet off really quick or no I'll leave it on I've got enough battery now I'm going to grab this and as soon as it's in my hand it's going to start evaporating now I know from experience I can get easily get a couple of these into this room without blowing the room up but the pressure does go up quite a bit um, and of course now I've said that I'm going to blow the room up now that this is vacuumed out to complete vacuum, I'm going to close this valve. You can see because I started out with an empty room and I'm only getting a little bit of sunlight, I've got already pretty chilled gas at 0.1C. So we're okay there. I'm going to open this vent, whoa, and get sucked into the wall, which happens. And I'm going to open this valve which dumps into that pipe volume pump which pulls into the tank that's on the other side of the wall which because this glass is shaded you can't really see but you can see the pressure coming up on that tank now once this room is down to a vacuum I will turn off this vent and then I can open the door and I can get out of here because I don't want this hydrogen in my base at all. It's a pain in the butt to clean up. So we're just waiting for the room to empty. Santa Pascal's, hey, we have a vacuum. So now I can turn this vent off and open this door. You can see that the pump is still pumping into the gas cylinder. Now, if I was filling from a warm gas cylinder or something like that, I would probably use my cooling system. And I'll show you the gas cylinder filling setup in a second here, or gas canister filling setup. So ignore this filter, that's not necessary, that's an add-on that I've added so I can grab gases out of contaminated bottles and stuff like that, or out of the atmosphere and da da da, -da. I need to add another portable tank connector or big tank something. Anyway, ignore that vent that's hooked up to the waste output for the filter so if you want to fill another canister from like a big can or you want to mix gases um if you mix gases you need a gas mixer set up i have one over here by my furnace but i'll get to that in a minute here um so, like, your torch does not actually run on 100% hydrogen. Surprise, surprise, despite what the... Um, so, you have to have both oxygen and hydrogen, which is volatiles and oxide out in the world. Oxide is actually, like, 90% oxygen, 10% nitrogen. The nitrogen we don't really care about. If you do care, nitrogen is what the suit propellant uses by default. It's not flammable, which if you put hydrogen in, you'll find out it's very flammable. Um, and it can cause great fun. Um, what else? I don't know. If there's any questions, like anyone chat something, say something, you know, four people watching and nobody's saying nothing. So now that we've given it a minute, this should be vacuumed out. So that's completely vacuumed out and close that valve. I now have a tank with that is a stack and a quarter or so of volatiles and that fills up chilled slightly to zero degrees. That fills up almost a quarter of that tank including the volume of the pipe network it's attached to. So you see 2.05 megapascals of pure hydrogen at 0.7 degrees centigrade. 
as this warms up, that pressure will go up and this tank will warm up because it's not insulated. These tanks over here have been sitting for a while. This one's been sitting for a long time. That one I think I filled from the atmosphere. Um, this one I filled with oxide. Ignore the carbon dioxide. That was a contamination issue on my end for not operating my gas system properly. But you can see it's warmed up to 10 pascals. Um, I pulled gas out of this and ran my furnace. And same with this one. It's warmed up 7.8 it may have been filled a little bit higher at first, but as it warms up, the, the pressure will go up dramatically. If you fill a tank all the way with cold gas and put it probably even in the sun, it'll blow up. That's probably what's been happening to people with their welders and stuff. I don't know. I've gotten blown up by roaming gas from my gas venting of my furnace because there's bugs in the atmospheric system. Gas outside doesn't actually dissipate properly. It just kind of whirls around and eventually comes back to smack India or something. So once you fill the tank and you're done filling and say you want to switch gases or whatever, first thing you want to do, pull that tank off because you don't want to empty the tank. There's no valve on this tank connector. Just disconnect it. It can be sitting here, doesn't matter. I turn off my volume pump and then over here on the gas manifold to vent the gas, I open, make sure all my other valves are closed first. Got my chiller closed, got my inside vent closed, that's super important. We don't want to put hydrogen into the base, it takes forever to clean up. Um, I don't need to push gas to the backside you know, to the input of that volume pump because I'm not trying to pump it back into the tank. I'm just trying to vent it. So I'm going to open to my gas manifold and you can see the pressure spikes up. And then I'm going to open to my passive vent on the outside and that will vent this manifold. And again, super important to use your atmosphere analyzer because it takes a lot longer than what this shows to actually fully evacuate a pipe. So you can see it now says zero. And we look over and we still got a, a bit of hydrogen in there. I wish you could just look at the tablet. Anyone know how to look at the tablet? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? That vents it out. So now that that's evacuated, I can close this and close this. And it's ready to use again. I could use it to fill with whatever else I want. I actually do want to go and find um, some other stuff because I want to see um, and that's hydrogen. I want to keep that. Bah, boom! Because I want to see what, because I've only actually played with volatiles and oxide, because that's what I needed. So I don't even know what the other types of ice yield yet. Um, I've got my helmet on still. i still got a decent amount of air, so I can cycle to the outside. Um... If people are interested, I can explain the solar array I've set up. Um, it was a pain in the butt, and I kind of sort of cheated a bit. By kind of sort of cheated, I mean the game saves as XML files, and instead of programming in eight solars, see, they're all reset to zero. Instead of programming in all eight of these, I, um, I edited the XML file. So that's a thing. Um, everything except for the voxels is XML. Um, so it's not too hard. You just It's going to be picky about the format. Anyway, what I wanted to do was to find out... Bueller, anyone? Four people watching, nobody talking. Probably just a bunch of bots. 
is find out what some of these other, like what this ice type stuff, there's more volatiles, that's good, um, yields when I let it evaporate. But I can't find any when I want to. I keep running into it in the daylight, but that's the other thing. Can we get a better flashlight? Stationers, people like seriously this is ridiculous whoa that's a big hole don't want to step in that I think I made that I think I was drilling up stuff there I'm looking for, aha that's what I'm looking for kick this on and we're just gonna pick up See, I don't run my headlamp that much, and, uh, oh, this is silicon. That's, I thought that was water ice. Well, I need some silicon anyway, so. See, that's the other thing, is the, the tool tips for the drilling are erratic at best. Like, see, flash, 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 flash. This is early access, you know, um... I have no doubt that a lot of this is going to get fixed. They have done really quite an amazing job. It's already very playable. Um, it does take a little bit getting started because it's just the tutorials are not done. There is, and even what's there is um, bad. That's more silicon. That's more. Wait. That's ice. See, now you understand why I wasn't sure. So we're going to see what ice actually yields when I get back. Wow, that's got a lot of volume to it. Okay, that's fine. Take myself out. And wander around a little bit, try to find my base. Oh yay, not too far away. Wait, maybe not. I don't know. That's the other thing, the render distance is abysmal. It's way, way too short, so it is easy to get lost out here. I have a feeling I'm gonna be lost for a minute. There it is. Is my chat, like, broken or something? I mean... Like, can I see who's in here? Ratbot? Rat woot? <laughs> Rat butt? Is that what it is? Rat butt? <laughs> I did find the viewers list finally. Anyway, uh, I was headed back. Ooh, there's some gold here too. And copper and uranium. I have to try to remember where this is. Uh, I thought I saw the base over here. Did I like run past it or something in my like attempt to... Turn off the drill. Jesus. I really, really hate this. There. There it is. And I thought I was headed the right direction. More volatile or more uh, oxide, which is good. Because I actually kind of need to get my base pressure up a little bit. That more? Yep. See, I knew I had ice closer, but, like, there's no mineral scanners. Which is why there's random chunks of stuff that I've dug to China for. <laughs> and then right next door, you know, completely open. See, dug to China here for something. Beware of holes. Alright. Let's go inside. Pressurizing. Oh, 
Okay, that battery's charged, so I can pop my suit. Oh, I locked my mask in case I got punchy. Turn this drill off, though. Alright, so now we're going to see exactly how the gas room works. Of course, we've got to wait for daylight again. So I'm probably going to end the stream here because I'm not going to make it guys sit around and wait for daylight again. Um, I'll put up, I'll record and put up the use, actual for use of the room on YouTube. Um, later and yeah did I lose that tank Where did I, oh I did start it back over here I need to spray paint that red so you know um, I guess nobody really cares so nobody's really watching so I'm going offline why is that open don't know maybe I was poking in its guts earlier Alright. Adios.